Due to the sensitive nature of this topic, listener discretion is advised. A night that started it all. October 30th, 1966. A female by the name of Sherry Bates was killed in a brutal murder scene that was near Riverside City's College Library in California. There's no suspect or any leads who did this such horrific act. The only evidence from the scene was the murder weapon, a small knife, as Sherry was brutally stabbed. The Riverside Police Department received a letter from an unknown person on November 29, 1966, and it was titled, The Confession, signed by no one. This is word for word what the letter said and what the police officers read. She was young and beautiful, but now she is battered and dead. She's not the first and she will not be the last. I lay awake nights thinking about my next victim. Maybe she will be the beautiful blonde that babysits near the little store and walks down the dark alley each evening about seven. Or maybe she will be the shapely brunette that said no when I asked her for a date in high school. But maybe it will not be either. But I shall cut off her female parts and deposit them for the whole city to see. So don't make it easy for me. Keep your sisters, daughters, and wives off the streets and alleys. Miss Bates was stupid. She went to the slaughter like a lamb. She did not put up a struggle, but I did. It was a ball. I first cut the middle wire from the distributor. Then I waited for her in the library and followed her out for about two minutes. The battery must have been about dead by then. I then offered to help. She was then very willing to talk to me. I told her that my car was down the street and that I would give her a lift home. When we were away from the library walking, I said it was about time. She asked me, about time for what? I said it was about time for her to die. I grabbed her around the neck with my hand over her mouth and my other hand with a small knife at her throat. She went very willingly. Her breast felt warm and very firm under my hands, but only one thing was on my mind making her pay for all the brush-offs that she had given me during the years prior. She died hard. She squirmed and shook as I choked her, and her lips twitched. She let out a scream once, and I kicked her in the head to shut her up. I plunged a knife into her, and it broke. I then finished the job by cutting her throat. I am not sick. I am insane. But that will not stop the game. This letter should be published for all to read it. It must save that girl in the alley. But that's up to you. It will be on your conscience, not mine. Yes, I did make that call to you also. It was just a warning. Beware. I am stalking your girls now. This was sent to the police department and to a publishing company known as Enterprise. Very, very eerie, 
very Stephen King-esque type situation, but this was reality. The letter was inside of an envelope and it contained only a fingerprint. But the fingerprint did not match up with any suspect in the database. Remember, this was 1966. A lot of forensics did not exist at this time. Six months later, an additional letter was sent to the police and the news outlets. Simply initialed with a Z that was joined with the number three. This became the symbol of the famed Zodiac Killer. Inside the letters were four lines of words. Bates had to die. There will be more. And there were. The second killing. On December 20th, 1968, two teenagers by the names of David Faraday and Betty Jensen were shot and killed in the car. Parked in a parking lot, minding their business. Innocent. Clearly the wrong place at the wrong time. Jensen nearly escaped as she broke free from the car. But she was shot an additional five times in the back. Killing her. Once again, there's no suspect in this case. And no witnesses were left behind. Things changed for the next one. The third killing. On July 5th, 1969... Darlene Farron and Michael McGow were shot and killed in their car that was in a parking lot. Well, Darlene was shot and killed. McGow made it out. The killer pulled up next to their car in a brown Ford Mustang. Concealing his identity, he silently walked up to the passenger side of their car. He fired five shots inside. Farron was pronounced deceased immediately, but McGow was able to survive and give police a description of the killer, the first they ever had of this. He described the killer as short, about 5 feet 8 inches tall, but heavy set. Not a blubbery fat, but the man was at least 195 pounds and had a large face. There was a composite sketch made of the killer. But his identity still remains a mystery, even with the sketch. There may have been a personal connection with the Zodiac Killer and Darlene Farron. Oddly enough, Farron's home phone was called approximately an hour after the killing. And when friends picked up the phone... There was no voice on the other side. The Vallejo police dispatch was also called by a payphone the same night. This is all that was said. And I quote, I want to report a double murder. If you go one mile east on Columbus Parkway to the public park, you will find kids in a brown car. They were shot with a 9mm Luger. I also killed those kids last year. Goodbye. And the real heart of this case begins. Cryptic Letters.
On July 31, 1969, the San Francisco Examiner, Chronicle, and Vallejo Times Herald received letters that would lay claim to the murders of Faraday, Jensen, and Farron. This one sent to the Times Herald was transcribed and read as follows. I am the killer of the two teenagers last Christmas at Lake Herman and the girl last 4th of July. To prove this, I shall state some facts which only I and the police know. Christmas. Brand name of ammo, Super X. Ten shots fired. Boy was on back feet of car. Girl was lying on right side, feet to west. Fourth of July. Girl was wearing patterned pants. Boy was also shot in knee. Brand name of ammo was Western. Here's the beginning of the cipher that was part of this one. The other two parts were sent to the Examiner and Chronicle. And this is word for word from Zodiac himself. I want you to print the cipher on your front page by Friday afternoon, August 1st, 69. If you do not do this, I will go on a kill rampage Friday night that will last the whole weekend. I will cruise around and pick off all stray people or couples that are alone then move on to kill some more until I have killed over a dozen people. Then these cryptic messages followed. Symbols that nobody knew. Nobody knew how to solve. Four in total were created over the span of the Zodiac's reign of terror. The first of four ciphers was known as the 408, 408 characters. It was quickly cracked by two school teachers in Salinas, California. And this is what they deciphered it to read. I like killing people because it is so much fun. It is more fun than killing wild game in the forest because man is the most dangerous animal of all. To kill something gives me the most thrilling experience. It is even better than getting your rocks off with a girl. The best part of it is that when I die, I will be reborn in paradise. And all the lone restrained people I have killed will become my slaves. I will not give you my name because you will try to slow down or stop my collecting of slaves for my afterlife. Now, Zodiac claimed that his identity would be in one of these ciphers, but two are still unsolved today. One took over 51 years to solve and was finally decoded in 2020. And now I will read you this. This one's known as the 340. I hope you're having lots of fun trying to catch me. That wasn't me on the TV show, which brings up a point about me. I am not afraid of the gas chamber, because it will send me to paradise all the sooner. Because I now have enough slaves to work for me, where everyone else has nothing when they reach paradise. So they are afraid of death. I am not afraid, because I know that my new life is, life will be an easy one in paradise death. It's crazy that it took that long to decipher that and it doesn't help with any identity of the Zodiac Killer. In September of 1969, he was back at it again. He stabbed Cecilia Shepard and Brian Hartnell. Hartnell survived the stabbing, but unfortunately he was unable to give a description of the assailant due to him being hooded. The very next month, the final of the Zodiac killings. Ones that have been confirmed, that is. 
A taxi driver in San Francisco named Paul Stein picked up the Zodiac Killer, obviously. He did not know who he was. The destination where Zodiac was going was a neighborhood called Presidio Heights. It's unknown if the Zodiac actually lived there or if it was a random destination, but it did not matter. Paul Stein was fatally shot in the taxi cab. There are seven confirmed victims directly related to the Zodiac Killer. However, he claims in many of his letters that he sent throughout the years that he's killed 37 individuals. He constantly taunted police agencies during the years of his murders. Also releasing stuff to the media to make people know it's really uncertain what the motive really was for all of this. In general, everybody was young, early 20s, or even teens. Paul Stein was the exception of being almost 30 years old. Yet, to start thinking maybe he just enjoyed killing like he said he did. There's a bunch of conspiracies and theories that surround Zodiac's identity. There's no official suspects in the case. It's still an open case, even to this day. It's one of the greatest unknown cases, cold cases, in the world. Similar to the cases of Jack the Ripper. Through process of elimination and extensive research through the years, it Five people have arisen as the suspects in these murders. They are as followed. Richard Gajkowski. He was an anti-police and pro-violence advocate in the San Francisco area in the late 60s, early 70s. Using many hardcore drugs. Clearly mess with judgment Gakowski which is the eerie part attended the final victim Paul Stein's funeral kind of strange don't you think a random person just attending a funeral for a random taxi driver The next suspect, Arthur Lee Allen, school teacher who admitted being in the area when the first victim was killed. Coincidentally, Allen was absent from school the very next day, the day after Sherry Bates' death. Rick Marshall. He lived in the Bay Area during the times of the Zodiac murders. He made suspicious comments on ham radio in the 70s, and it raised a lot of questions that he, in fact, may be the Zodiac killer. Lawrence Kane, and I think it's my prime suspect. He sustained a permanent brain injury from a car crash in the early 60s. This brain injury caused him to have the inability to control self-gratification. Nothing was ever good enough. As you heard, Zodiac wanted to keep killing and was never satisfied. He was clearly mentally ill and this would make him a prime suspect in this case. A very common suspect at, to this date, based on a lot of evidence in the modern era. Zodiac Killer was, in fact, a cop or some sort of military veteran using tactical approaches and understanding police scheduling and 
where and when police were. Witnesses all stated that the killer had a crew cut and wore military style boots. These murders were also in places where Zodiac seemed to know the police's location, like I said before. The theory that ties into this is that the killer is Gary Francis Post. He did die in 2018, but a DNA analysis performed in 2021 had a partial positive indication on Post. Post was a an Air Force veteran and he was also a house painter at the time. To tie that in, evidence at the first scene, the murder of Sherry Bates, was a watch. It had paint splattered on it. And there was also a tactical boot print. A boot print that was in all of the scenes. And it matched what Post commonly wore. He also checked into a hospital that same night that Sherry Bates was killed. And that hospital was right down the road from the scene. No one knows the identity of the Zodiac Killer to this date. It remains one of the most iconic cold cases in the world. One where it's hard to understand how there was not anybody that was the prime suspect the five that I gave you they actually look very similar to what the sketch looks like will we ever know who the Zodiac Killer is or was probably not until then that case will never be closed and as the years go by people get older and older Witnesses and victims have all perished. If you enjoyed this episode of Crimes and Conspiracies, make sure you hit the follow and share it with all those interested and continue asking the questions. Who, what, where, when, why, and how.